Similar to many other competitive activities, the determining factors for winning and losing in fighting games are variable. However, unlike group sports, which may rely on team chemistry, fighting games more so rely on player-to-character chemistry. The unique thing about fighting games is that there is no real blueprint for how to play the quote-unquote right way. However, excluding the plethora of factors that all aid in the equation that lead to the answer of either winning or losing, I decided to hone in my focus on only one factor, that being fighting game character archetypes, this time featuring the most recognizable franchise in the genre, Street Fighter. Despite the nature of the experiment being more of a fun observation than a scientific fact finder, we will still look at different values and follow rules to maintain somewhat of a controlled environment. The values we will look at look as such. Five major tournaments, three in North America, one in Europe, and one in Asia. A period of five consecutive years, specifically the years 2014 through the year 2018. As well as the tournament winner character archetype, and lastly the tournament runner-up character archetype. The rules in place for this experiment are as such. Characters that fit two archetypes will only be placed in one via my own discretion. Only the final characters used in the grand final set will count towards the result. Play styles to play a secondary factor for the unorthodox archetypes. The character archetypes to be used for Street Fighter are as such. Traditional, a character that wields a fireball, uppercut, and has average mobility. Zoner. A character that excels in long-range combat, wields keep-out moves such as projectiles, long limbs, etc. Setup Mix-Up, a mobile character that excels in close-range combat with a strong Okizeme presence. Grappler, a character that lacks a projectile, wields an unteckable command grab, and has average to slower mobility. Unorthodox, a character that is equipped with various tools that encompass many archetypes. Examples such as lack of a fireball, yet still equipped with a traditional uppercut as well as a command grab. The first major tournament we take a look at is CEO, and over the last five years, results proved to be fairly diverse with no back-to-back -back archetype winning the tournament. And that's it! Infiltration is your CEO 2014 champion! Kazunoko sealing it! Yes! And that's it! Kazunoko has taken CEO 2015! You can't kill. Maybe you can kill? No! Not quite! Tokido. And he does it! He does it! He qualifies for Capcom Cup with a perfect! Tokido has done it! He has done it! He's qualified here at CEO! Oh my god, that was so dangerous! The and flex. the flex! And the SBD! Snake Eyes defeats Pump! CEO 2017 champion! Snake Eyes! Oh. Another throw! How many? Another How many? Throw. How many? Oh! oh. It's oh enough! Fujimura takes it! Shall I? But CEO 2018 champion for Street Fighter V, give it up for Fujimura! The second tournament, and the one with the largest amount of participants in North America, EVO, proved to have much more consistent results over a five-year span, with four straight years of reign by the traditional character archetype. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Luffy! Luffy has done it! He has taken Evolution 2014! On The third tournament, Seam, is one of the most difficult tournaments in Asia as it normally attracts a lot of talent from various regions. However, over the last five years, only two archetypes made grand finals, with the traditional and unorthodox archetypes splitting three wins to two. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is it! That and is it. is the champion, and he is so ecstatic right now! That overhead! <laughs> that overhead! Get them to grand finals and beat. Mago did not oh, what? Oh, and that's it. Ultra, yeah, that's this it. This is it. This is it. This is it. Mago taking Southeast Asia Majors 2015. Congratulations. Oh, my God. 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 Oh
my God. No Cinderella story today. Tokido missed a no fun allowed. Oh. And it. And Echo Fox Tokido is your Asia Regional Representative at Capcom. Position. Pushing. There it there is. There it Big is. Bird. Big Bird. Your champion here at the Open Bracket SGA Major 2018 tournament over Tokido. The fourth tournament is normally the first major in North America, making it an interesting early test bed in the competitive season for any fighting game. Final round's results showed the zoner with the most amount of tournament wins for the archetype out of all five majors used in the experiment. Oh, he's in trouble! He's in oh, trouble! No, no. Reinhardt's gonna right. take it! Final round 17! He got second last year, this time it's first place! He built the meter in the ultra! And ladies and gentlemen, the first Capcom premiere event of 2015 is in the books. Your champion, Razor Shen, on the verge. Yeah, very close. He's another, another hitter too. He oh! gets a throw, and that's gonna do it. The throw that puts him into the Capcom Cup. Hey. Oh, got hit. He's blocked it. He's blocked it. Not quite enough to kill him. Oh, and Shen, oh, it's your final round 20. Champion here. Stop frame. the press. Wow, the back throw, I don't get it. No. That was a grave mistake right there from Tokido. I don't know why he did that. Maybe he was trying to get a good demon foot set up. Who knows? But you've got our 2018 final round champion on the first stop for the CPT. The final tournament, DreamHack, is normally one that caters more so to European competitors, which often adds an interesting factor to character selection, as well as it was the only tournament that did not feature a traditional character archetype win over the past five years. What's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? Oh he gave God. up! He gave up! What, what happened? I don't know! What happened? I don't know what happened there, Kim. Can someone explain say? to me what happened? Fudo is your DreamHack 2014 champion. champion! Back a bit. Oh, oh no! no. The full what? three crowds being What a run. perfect way to end the tour. On, and select one more Logan. hit. This is it. And he takes it with the anti wow. punch. And everyone back in the screams in the arena. Right here, everyone in attendance. Oh, 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 you deal, you could don is your dream hack to it. Summer 2017 champion. Give it up, people. Now we're in the corner. It's time to guess. Oh, and she missed. How did the drop kick miss? That's so huge. Got him with the hit. That's going to do it. Justin Wong, your dream hack Montreal champion. Therefore, after going through all of the data presented, the final character tally stacks as such. Traditional and unorthodox archetypes coming in 1 and 2, both in wins and runner-up results. Setup mix-up and zoner archetypes tying for last with regards to least amount of Grand Finals appearances. And finally, grapplers coming in at third with regards to Grand Finals appearances, but also being last with regards to tournament wins. So what can we conclude based on this data? Well, a few things, but the most glaring piece of evidence is the type of character used in the Grand Finals in five majors over the last five years. The traditional and unorthodox archetypes made up 76% of the character pool, while the remaining 24% was divided among the rest of the character archetypes. Secondly, the usage of quote-unquote specialist character archetypes in the likes of zoners and grapplers seem to be less common than characters that wield more of a traditional arsenal with regards to their moveset. Thirdly is the interesting discovery of tournament results upon character switching. Players who change characters are only 1 in 4 out of the 5 instances where a switch occurred. The only example of a tournament winner of the 5 was Momochi when he elected to change over to Evil Ryu over Ken at EVO 2015 which, additionally, is the only character switch that can be considered the same archetype out of the five instances. Therefore, after gathering all of the data and putting everything into perspective under these set circumstances, we ask again, do character archetypes matter in Street Fighter? The short answer is no. However, the long answer indicates that character archetypes in Street Fighter certainly make a difference, just not the entire difference. The fact of the matter is that there are too many variables to simply say that character archetypes dictate tournament success. Player skill is also an enormous factor, as top Street Fighter players like Tokido and Infiltration made Grand Finals multiple times in the data range. Therefore, results featuring characters like Akuma and Nash are possibly more so indicative of the player's personal skill than their choice of a character archetype. Lastly, despite the games belonging to the same franchise, it is fairly evident that Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5 play remarkably different from each other, and although some of the characters fit the same archetypes, the game's tactical structure ultimately dictates what is allowed and what is denied. 
In conclusion, while there is some evidence to indicate the character archetypes matter in Street Fighter, there are simply too many other factors that can make a similar case, which ultimately is perhaps for the best.